Okay, good afternoon. Um, so this is a project called the UBC Transportation Testbed Project, uh, mm -hmm. phase one, which is a hydrogen fueling station. And I'm gonna ask Melissa to, she was, she's with Applied Sciences and uh, this is kind of her, her project. So Melissa's gonna describe the, the overview project. I know some of you have seen this before and there might be a few of you uh, that it's all brand new. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to make it brief, but also um, descriptive. Thanks, Val. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the Faculty of Applied Sciences Transportation Testbed, which is the overall name for this project, uh, is um, and its associated infrastructure and research objectives is an exciting project that we think has a potential for global impact. The research sits at the intersection of renewable energy and clean transportation technology. And while these technologies in and of themselves are interesting and fascinating, it's really the interconnectedness of these in this system um, that makes this installation particularly uh, unique and innovative. Um, an advanced energy management system will also allow the researchers to optimize these interactions between these uh, exciting technologies. So the project has been divided into three main phases. The first phase, which has already been designed and tendered and is currently under construction, includes uh, an upgrade to a two megawatt transformer, an external electrical uh, room or e-house, so 500 kilowatt hours of battery storage and advanced EV chargers within Thunderbird Parkade. But the second phase, which is the scope of this meeting today, um, is focused on a hydrogen refueling station, which is being designed to accommodate and refuel passenger vehicles, as well as medium duty vehicles, such as 40 foot buses. And then the final phase, which we are not gonna be talking much about today, but, um, and will be a future project, is approximately one megawatt solar installation, which will be uh, installed on the roof of Thunderbird Parkade. Uh, and the last thing I'd say is just that we've worked closely with Dialog over the last uh, many months uh, on this design of the hydrogen refueling station um, to make it not only you know, aesthetically pleasing, but also reinforce the research theme. Uh, and we're really excited to share the results with you today. Okay, thanks, thanks. Melissa. Uh, and I should I should also just back up real quick and just say that that not everybody is here today, but um, this was a huge team effort, and um, mm. so we've got hydrogen consultants of HTech and PowerTech. Um, uh, the interpretive design is by Aldrich Peers, and we have civil engineering, associated engineering. Dialogue is uh, landscape, um, electrical, mechanical, uh, landscape, and architecture. Okay, um, so the project is located uh, adjacent to Thunderbird Parkade. Uh, it's currently a basketball court, which is going to be relocated. Um, it's seen as a, a sort of energy precinct here where we've got the substation, um, which, which is existing, uh, D District Energy Center, um, the skate park, not necessarily an energy, uh, part of the energy precinct, but still cool nonetheless. Uh, and then, um, our PV array, which will be on the parkade. Um, so again, our site located right here at the intersection of uh, Thunderbird Boulevard and Athletes Way, which is a pedestrian greenway. Um, just getting a little closer into the site and also just touching on same, some of the same um, phases that uh, Melissa described. Um, up here, C is a uh, basically our e-house and that's part of phase zero, which is uh, under construction now. Um, it's also connected with uh, nine new EV charging stations inside uh, the ground, ground level of Thunderbird Parkade. Um, and then new transformer and then the tr transformer will then be tying into uh, the colored area, which is the phase that we're talking about now, which is phase one and the hydrogen fueling station. Um, just to give you an idea, just with Google Earth, um, uh, the site here with an aerial view and just some views of the, the basketball court um, as it currently is. Our, going in a little closer, our site plan uh, consists, uh, somebody's, maybe everybody can mute. Um, our site plan consists of uh, two containers. Uh, one is an electrolyzer, which is, where everything kind of starts. Um, power will come in here and water. Um, that is where the water and oxygen are pulled apart and hydrogen is um, then compressed and chilled. Um, it then is 
uh, brought through an underground uh, duct or duct bank um, that will go into a storage container, which is uh, where compression and storage happens. Um, and then the two will then talk to a dispenser down here at the vehicle forecourt. And uh, you can see that we've got some, uh, some vehicle um, maneuvering patterns that, that help define sort of that area for the forecourt, um, but we'll be able to service both uh, passenger fuel cell cars, uh, as well as um, we're planning on um, hope, hopefully being able to accommodate a 40 foot bus, um, which would be on the Thunderbird Boulevard Parkade side. Um, our site is arranged around uh, this diagonal pedestrian way uh, that connects the existing sidewalk with the um, existing greenway. So it's it's really kind of a desire line that that cuts cuts that corner. Um, pedestrian uh, the, or the sidewalk rather coming from um, Thunderbird is then currently it, it, it kind of dips down and then um, reconnects over here. We're basically going to continue it and it the, the pedestrian way will kind of come around and just um, just uh, come around the fruit vehicle forecourt and connect with the, the existing sidewalk. Um, we, we have a canopy here uh, which is overhead a canopy over the vehicle forecourt that will be um, draining rainwater into a stormwater basin. Um, some of that water will be then trickling in and filtering into a bioswale, which is kind of the, um, the barrier around this electrolyzer container. Um, there are several uh, exist, all these number sevens are all existing trees that uh, on site that we'll be maintaining. Um, there are three trees along here that uh, they're smaller and those will be removed. And then this other major or big tree at the, at the corner um, is also going to be retained. Uh, just some elevations and to give you some, some context, we've got uh, Thunderbird Parkade here. This is the elevation along Thunderbird Boulevard. Uh, you can see the canopy here, um, which is a, sort of a butterfly shaped um, steel and uh, mass timber structure. Uh, you can see the containers in the background here. Um, containers have a uh, perforated mesh screen that will um, still allow you to see the rooftop equipment, but also um, be providing uh, some, some screening ar um, around that. Some other elevations. And then the color, uh, the color coding um, uh, an identity of each container is is different to kind of explain what what it, what's going on in each container, so that um, uh, people visiting the site and walking through it will start to understand all the, the different components of uh, of the of the project and how hydrogen's uh, produced. Uh, I'm going to let James talk a little bit about the landscape plan. Yeah, thank you, Kyle. Um, so here, just a repeat of the earlier site plan, and just uh, a mention that it's been ordered to work with the desire lines in the area, the geometry of the infrastructure, but also with a layout that maximized tree retention on site of the large mature trees in the in the rear. Um, created by this framework, there are three nodes, um, one primarily sort of socialization space in the heart of the site. Um, another node closer to the educational components where a lot of that um, interpretive learning will be located. Um, then as well, of course, the energy um, slash refueling zone to the south, which is primarily uh, vehicular oriented. Uh, the materials selected are going to complement both the architectural palette, but also the existing campus palette. And um, as well, stormwater has been sort of chosen as a unique element on the site being captured, as Kyle mentioned, and then highlighted around the electrolyzer, providing additional educational opportunities. Just a quick note on tree retention. Um, most of the trees on site are being retained and that was a large driver for the, uh, the sort of location and layout of many of the elements. Um, three are being lost to the south. Um, these are where the new entry for the refueling station will be, but all of the other large um, trees are proposed to be retained. And on this page, the planting palette um, really matches campus guidelines. So 
tries to create a cohesive whole with the surrounding area um, with a focus on drought tolerant species. There is no proposed irrigation for this site. And so we wanted to choose something that was both responsive to those campus palette choices, but also could sort of survive and weather um, future shifting climates as well. Um, and within that is a mix of local species that will provide sort of flowering and hopefully add a little bit of a pollinator or habitat value to the site. Okay, thanks, James. And uh, just to give you a sense of the overall look and feel, um, again, this is this is kind of what the uh, like a typical uh, morning would be. Um, you could imagine potentially a bus uh, fueling up for the day. Um, uh, this container here is the um, electrolyzer, and we, we've developed a icon or symbolic uh, graphic package with uh, Aldrich Piers. Um, to, to give identity to each container. Um, again, we've got a perforated uh, metal screen um, with integrated LED lighting uh, around the rooftop mechanical equipment. Um, uh, you can see the vehicle forecourt is separated by the pedestrian way by a, a thin rail that will um, kind of wrap around um, at, at uh, uh, keeping, keeping them separate. Um, the canopy again is uh, just a big, um, the outer frame is all uh, st structural steel be painted um, with interior framing with uh, mass timber. Uh, the canopy will then be covered with a glass um, roof system with some standoffs. Um, and it'll be uh, basically allowing uh, any hydrogen that, um, that or it, it prevents collection of any hydrogen that would be uh, leaking out at all. And so the, the roof is, will act as basically a large vent. Uh, with this view, you could imagine since education uh, is a huge component of this project uh, that um, we imagine tours being given uh, throughout the day. Um, so this could be just your typical afternoon with a group of um, either students, researchers, uh, other municipalities uh, coming to see this site. Um, we've got a, several types of interpretive uh, material, but a, a reader rail here at the, um, at the vehicle forecourt area. And then each container would then have some sort of an infographic explaining how the whole system is working. Um, again, you can see the mechanical screen and then each, um, each container has what we're calling a bookmark, which uh, in this case, it's a little bit light there, but it just um, it calls out what the container actually is. Uh, and then you can see on the, on the right-hand side here, uh, we'll have some seating uh, integrated around the uh, stormwater basin. And here's another view of that stormwater basin. Um, we are currently designing a water feature uh, that will be part of the interpretive plan. Um, but the idea is that the rain runoff coming from the canopy will then come through a rainwater leader um, into this sculptural element. Um, and uh, this element will be, uh, again, part of the interpretive plan and showing the, um, basically kind of highlighting sunlight with uh, water and, and how they translate into energy. Um, the ground plane has been designed Again, we had this, this strong diagonal and uh, we've broken it up and um, or frayed the edges of it with more of a circular pattern that kind of ties in with the, the motif of, um, that we've been using for uh, all the components. Um, there will be a, at the stormwater basin, uh, a open steel graded steel grate that will allow uh, you to see water kind of um, flowing from the stormwater basin into the bioswale. Uh, plus, there will be a, a, an overflow in, in the stormwater basin in case of uh, any uh, larger rainfall events that will go to the storm. Oops. And then the view of uh, kind of the evening, um, sort of golden hour, um, but along Thunderbird Boulevard. Uh, again, you can see all the components. Um, the, dispenser and uh, maybe somebody fueling up uh, to go uh, to head home. A view at night, 
We're proposing um, some strip LED lighting around the entire perimeter of the canopy, as well as some lighting along the spine of it to allow ambient lighting um, for uh, the fueling area. Each container will have also um, strip LED lighting <clears throat> around the, the bottom edge of the, uh, of the mechanical screen, um, which will basically downlight the, uh, the container and provide uh, some ambient lighting on all four sides. And just going also continue on the lighting theme, um, the lighting plan uh, we are using for any of the uh, lamp standards uh, using the Celex uh, model that um, is part of the UBC um, lighting, lighting guidelines. Um, and then this gives you kind of an overview of sort of the entire site, including our phase zero uh, stretch of adding lighting along the um, the, the uh, greenway. And you can see the phase zero uh, e-house um, along the connection here. So you can start to uh, sort of connect the dots of all the, um, the systems um, playing uh, that are involved. And with that, I will conclude. And if anybody has any questions or comments,